Rodney Rare once again with a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks Thursday evening, and it's the first day of December, and now the clock is running on winter. It is the first day of what we call meteorological or climatological winter in the Northern Hemisphere, December, January, and February, of course, making up the three coldest months of the year in our climate zone. Our average high on today's date is 43. We bottom out at 34 for an average high in mid-January. Of course, we, uh, year, about a year or so ago, almost a year and a half ago at this point, uh, we transitioned to the new 30-year averages based on the climatological period 1991 to 2020. Before that, for a decade, our averages were based on the 30-year chunk 1981 to 2010. With the new 30-year averages that went into effect last year, our average high temperature reaches its bottom at 34 instead of 32. 32 used to be the old uh, kind of bottom of the curve in our neck of the woods, but uh, 34 is now where our average low, or our average high, I should say, bottoms out about six weeks from right now. We're into cloud season uh, with December being the cloudiest month of the year on average. Uh, this graphic is based on noon observations, but no matter what time you take the observation and uh, make a graph out of it, uh, December is going to be a pretty cloudy month. Uh, December, January, and February, no surprise, are three cloudiest months of the year. December barely edges out January. For cloud cover, we can thank our proximity to the Great Lakes for all the clouds as we go into the winter season. You know, December tends to be pretty cloudy because the lakes are still fairly warm, at least compared to a lot of the air that's blowing over them. And... When cold air blows over the relatively warm Great Lakes, not only can you see precipitation, but of course you can see a lot of cloud cover downwind from the lakes. All right, December can be a real wild card when it comes to snowfall. We've had a few Decembers of late that have featured very paltry amounts of snow, including last year, 2.1 at the airport last December. In 2014 and 2015, we had less than one inch of snow for the entire month of December, but then the opposite side of the coin is sometimes true, and no better example than December of 2010, 53.1 inches of snow in a month in December of 2010. Our 30-year average snowfall for December at the Youngstown Warren Airport is 14.8 inches. All right, so in case you missed it, I doubt at this point there's many people who are watching this video who haven't seen my winter forecast, but in case you, you, you missed it, we did this two weeks ago tonight back on the 17th of November, and... Uh, kind of the bottom line when it comes to our current winter outlook. And we're going to update this again in a couple of weeks, right around mid-December. We think the the odds are strongest when it comes to temperatures this winter of it being near average or colder than average. Both uh, outcomes are about equally likely at this point. Uh, it may surprise you considering how often we've been talking about a cold December, but that doesn't mean the whole winter is going to be that cold. I think December might have the strongest odds of a colder than average month. I do suspect that later in the winter, January to February, uh, we will see more frequent bouts of, of mild weather. But we uh, you know, kind of grade this forecast and issue this forecast on the premise that we're talking about the season as a whole, December, January, February, and we think the odds are roughly about the same for a near average month, or a near average season, I should say, and a colder than average season. We do think that the odds are strongest for a near average season in terms of snow. Next on the list, though, the next highest odds are an above-average season. We think the odds of above-average snow this season are slightly higher than for it to be a below-average season in the snow department. Again, we're going to update these numbers in the rest of our forecast coming up in a couple of weeks. It was a uh, brisk and chilly start to the month, but nothing like we had two years ago, back on December 1st of 2020, 7.7 inches worth of snow recorded at the airport. This was a big East Coast storm. Amounts were quite a bit heavier off to our east a couple of hours, but locally 7.7 .7 inches of snow. Nothing like that coming anytime real soon. We've got a cold December forecast, but uh, in the short term, not particularly snowy. That may change later in the month. In the meantime, across the country this evening, the, the uh, weather actually pretty quiet for the first day of meteorological winter. Most of the action is actually in California. Heavy rain, Sacramento and Fresno. Uh, and including the Bay Area around San Francisco. And, of course, this is heavy snow in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, uh, including around Lake Tahoe. For us, in about 24 hours, there will be a big crowd gathered in downtown Youngstown for the annual tree lighting and holiday parade. Now, the number's a little bit deceptive, I think. You know, it's not going to be that cold temperature-wise. It'll be well up into the 40s. But I think the wind will be increasing and more noticeable by late in the afternoon, early in the evening. So it's going to feel a little cooler than it actually is. And, of course, in downtown Youngstown, depending on where you're standing, 
there can be a real wind tunnel effect um, in, in between some of the taller buildings. So bundle up, even though it's not going to be freezing cold, I think it'll feel a little cooler than it actually is. Could there be a sprinkle by the end of the evening? I can't rule that out, but I think it's like a 10% chance. Uh, most of the evening will just be fairly cloudy and uneventful. Uh, clouds will continue to thicken then overnight, and then we have our chance of showers uh, later at night and into Saturday morning. This front Saturday morning is pretty much a carbon copy of what we had on Wednesday. Now, I don't think there'll be as much rain with this front as a lot of us had on Wednesday. Some of us had an inch plus worth of rain. Don't see that happening with this, but the overall idea is similar. Crashing temperatures, gusty winds, showers mostly confined to the morning with some sun in the afternoon. This will set the stage for a uh, uneventful but chilly end of the weekend on Sunday. All right, we had a gust of 41 at the airport on Wednesday. Could we see a 41 mile per hour gust Saturday morning and midday? That's possible. I think we'll average 25, 30, 35 in a lot of the area. A noticeable wind, uh, no matter what the speed and gusts are. Um, throughout the midday hour Saturday, the winds will start to diminish then Saturday evening and into the overnight. So again, no one's going to get an inch worth of rain out of this. All of our models are under a half an inch. Now the models kind of were underdone with Wednesday's rain. And even if they're underdone by some extent with Saturday's rain, which I kind of doubt they are, but but just in case they are, still, uh, you know, the top end of, of the possibilities here, probably a half an inch or so. I, I don't see anyone really getting an inch worth of rain. So... Looking at the weekend forecast, this 53 is a daybreak high on Saturday. We'll end up between 35 and 40 in the afternoon. Again, the wind a factor, so you know the wind chill is going to be lower than the air temperature Saturday afternoon. Again, pretty much just how things played out on Wednesday. And then only 38 on Sunday. That's about 4 degrees below average. It'll become partly sunny after a fairly bright start. All right, 8 to 14 day outlook. Now, we've been talking a lot in recent videos about the cold December forecast. Will it be an extreme month? I don't think so. At least the first few weeks. Maybe at the end of the month, uh, things may take a turn for uh, the colder. But at least through mid-month and maybe even about the 20th, I think it'll be consistently pretty cold compared to the average. I don't think this is the kind of pattern that is likely to produce shots of, of true Arctic air that can deliver sub-zero temperatures this far to the south at night. Can deliver a day where the high is like 20. I don't see that. I see a lot of days in our future over the next two to three weeks uh, with highs in the 30s. Uh, anywhere between 5 and 10 degrees below average at times, but 20 below average. Again, nighttime temperatures getting below zero. I don't think the pattern supports that because while we have very big support in the Atlantic, big block up here, the uh, pattern out to the west is not one that's going to promote extreme cold in the eastern U.S. because there's still going to be, you know, a pronounced trough at times along the west coast. As long as that trough is out there, then the cold is going to be aimed, the core of the cold, the biggest anomalies, if you will, are going to try to be aimed out here instead of right down the chute into our area. So, again, a cold pattern, probably not an extreme pattern temperature-wise in the medium range. Will we see some snow, though, as we head towards mid-month? I think we will. Timing, amounts, details, that's far off into the future. Just know that in the next week, we are not expecting any sort of wintry shenanigans precipitation-wise. Thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll do it again Friday evening. Have a great rest of your Thursday night.